Welcome to the Wine Guy, and we're here at Cordonu, and we're with Mr. Jake Crimmin. Wow, I get a mister. Oh, you yeah. do get a mister. Uh, also, AKA Austin Powers or Clark Kent. How do you oh, feel about that? I've had Day Medna already. Day so Medna. Brilliant. Really get much worse than that, to be fair. <laughs> but looking, uh, looking good. Um, <laughs> we're here at Cordonu, and uh, Jake uh, works Cordonu. We're going to taste uh, some exciting wines mm -hmm. that you believe. You selected three for us. Yep, uh, three that I'm very excited about. I've got a lot of attention over the last two days. So, um, and yeah, what have we got I thought, then? I thought I'd share with you. Yeah, yeah. what have we got? Um, so, first up, I brought the uh, Bella Sauvignon Blanc. Now, honestly, when I first saw this, I thought it was um, a bit girly looking and a bit um, nondescript for what it is. It's a Kiwi Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah. But it's, um, the, its trick up its sleeve is it's a low alcohol Kiwi Sauvignon Blanc. Um, some people run in the other direction when you say low alcohol wise because there's a lot of rubbish ones out Especially there. Especially if they're English. Especially if they're <laughs> English. <laughs> oh, you're going to get me sued already. Uh, um, but they've done a really good job with this. Um, they've not ripped the guts out as many people do when they're producing low alcohol wines. They've done some very intricate canopy management and they've a lot of vineyard work to get the sugar levels down and uh, go get the alcohol levels down. So it's 9.5% here. Um, uh, this is made by Tim and... Uh, Tim and Rob, yeah. yeah, who are both with us today. Um, they, and, well, Tim, being a man from marketing, has basically kind of pitched this as a low calorie, low uh, skinny sap, he uh, likes to call skinny it. Skinny Sauvignon yeah. Blanc. So looking about 30% less calories than a normal Kiwi Sav, purely because it's less alcohol. No. But it's because it's less alcohol, that means you can have more of it, but that's going to build up the calories. <laughs> that's, so. uh, that's the idea, yeah, you can have 30% more. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so 9.5, that's one thing we've actually uh, tasted quite a bit here at London Wine Fair at XL, is that we've tasted quite a few lower alcohol wines. I tried one from Casa Miranda from uh, uh, Chile, and it was 11.7%. I know not too that's, low, that's the, the but, but for low Chile, alcohol. that's yeah. amazing. And it was a Shira, and it was absolutely wonderful. Good. Really, really good, oh. yeah. So um, I'm seeing a lot of this in the New World as well. There's um, uh, what the, 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 well, the Sasakaya family uh, down in Patagonia in Argentina making old vine Pinot Noir. And he was uh, always hitting 15% alcohol, but down to a bit of canopy management, he's got it down to 12%. So three degrees just by a bit go. of management yeah. in the. And a lot of people up. don't want just big, bullshit loads of alcohol. Some people just want to enjoy the wine. And we get a lot of people coming through Western Wine School saying that they, they just get headaches and they get. It's too overindulgent, and they, they have headaches in the morning because of all this alcohol that they're hitting, and they can't oh, enjoy yeah. their favourite wines anymore. But with these high-level alcohols, you don't realise until it's too late that it's high alcohol. Exactly. But this one, if you had not too many glasses, if no. you had the right amount, you won't get a headache in the morning. For ladies at lunch. For ladies at lunch. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> uh, so what do we get here on the nose and on the um, palate? I mean, typical Kiwi Sauvignon Blanc flavours. Not too punchy, not as punchy as some Marlborough Sauvignon Blancs can be, but definitely the tropical in there. More on the unripe pineapple side of things, yep. kiwi fruits, um, and quite floral as well. A little bit of passion fruit in there as well. No, yeah, um, less on the grassy side. And fantastic as well. You'd struggle to know that it was low alcohol if you didn't know, really. We've blind tasted quite a few people with this, and they haven't pinpointed mm. that it is the low alcohol Absolutely. that's making it, making it different in there. So this is kind of picnic, picnic white, isn't picnic it? White. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And maybe share a bottle and still drive home? No, no, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll go I know, I know, I know. Place, I know. <laughs> okay, so next we're going to go on to. Okay, next up. From a um, very new world, very new thinking, to very old world and very old thinking. 12th yeah. century. 12th century. Yeah, there's not many wineries that can date back that far, right. is it? Um, so, yeah, this is um, Scala Day, um, translated as Stairway to Heaven. Um, if you look at the label, you've actually got the little ladder up there and a cross at the top. So, uh, salvation is close by. <laughs> um, it is, yeah, established by monks in the 12th century, and the monastery is still there. And is part. I believe you broke your leg down there. Broke at some my, point? Uh, broke my arm. Broke your yeah, arm. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. The wine was so good that I fell down the steps when I left the monastery. But hey, what a great selling point. Yeah, um, the, uh, <laughs> the the winemaker um, Ricardo. Uh, yeah, he d we did a barrel tasting of this wonderful wine. Well, all the grapes from all the soils that went into it. And uh, he wasn't giving tasting samples like this. They were pretty full glasses. <laughs> and it was so good tasting like a Cabernet from Licorella soil and Carignan from Licorella soil and Garnacha from that soil and seeing the differences mm. that uh, I didn't even know where I was at the end of the tasting. So steps were very hard to the negotiate. Hospital, by the, by the end of the oh, tasting. a Catalan hospital. 
I would never recommend a Catalan hospital. Their way of actually finding out if I was in pain and I'd broken my arm was just to put their thumb right on the brake. And I don't think I'd ever scream so loud. That'll do it. Uh, yeah, so Nike said, you know, that wine is for uh, girls at lunch and I screamed like a girl <laughs> that day. <laughs> but there we go. Anyway, we digress. Let's go back on this one. It's 15% alcohol. 15% alcohol, yeah. So we're, we're yeah, well, 30% more than the, uh, the Bella. <laughs> uh, so now, yeah, we're getting this big boy territory. Um, like you said, Licorella Soils, uh, very volcanic um, terroir up there. Um, this, well, the oldest winery in Priorat. So Priorat is a DO, tiny DO in Catalan, in northeast Spain. Um, their Licorella Soils gives you a lot of minerality a lot of great drainage um, and the vines are some of the highest in pre route up there so you've got the Garnacha or Grenache which is the main staple grape variety for this and you've got Syrah, Carignana and the Cabernet Sauvignon in there as well. Am I right in thinking that um, uh, Ricardo is moving away from using Cabernet Sauvignon and Syrah in his top wine in the Cartioxia he's just going back to Garnacha and Carignan? Yeah, yeah this is um, he's um, really experimenting with how diversif uh, diversified he can get Garnacha um, doing great things with it and he's pulling out the other varieties, not completely, but bit by bit. Going more Spanish. Going more Spanish. Fantastic. Yeah. Should we try? Yeah, absolutely. What I really love about this, and this has uh, been a feature, this wine been a feature at uh, West London Wine School and certainly on the Wine Guy, this wine is just bloody good. It's bags of character, lots of complexity, and uh, when we taste this with students, we just say, just shout out anything, it's likely to be in this wine. <laughs> I mean, it's got fruits. For me, for me, it's exactly the same. It's got power, voluminous to it, it's lots of fruit, great minerality, yeah. still great acidity. Herbal touches, Herbal, and sweet, sweet spice. Sweet spice, yeah. yeah. It's, um, it's, a, it's a bag, it's fun for all the family. <laughs> that is wonderful. And the beautiful thing about this on the palate is that when you taste this, it is 15% alcohol, but you don't get that really intense warming sensation that you do with a lot of new world. There's so much else going on there. It Complexity. And uh, I, I call this dangerously drinkable because it's so good, it masks the alcohol. Um, but if you have a share a bottle of it, you've got to be careful because... You don't scale stairs. <laughs> you will fall down some stairs and break your arm. <laughs> uh, but uh, let me just taste this. Wonderful. And I see here, look, 90 points, wine spikes. Only 90? Only 90? Yeah, what does he know? Must be out of 90. Uh, right. Yeah, there we, there we go. Take it off. Right, what's next? Our grand finale. Um, so, a uh, bit of a kooky one, um, and I like this because, well, partly because it's um, Paola, a uh, winemaker who's around somewhere, but she's a. Um, it's a little pet project. I mean, a lot of wines they make because they're making them for the market, but this one is her little plaything. Um, so Argentina, we know Argentina for Malbec and maybe some Chardonnay on the white side, Torontes. Um, this is a Gewurztraminer. Um, to my knowledge, um, one of the only Gewurztraminers coming from Argentina. Um, Tardio, late harvest, Gewurztraminer. It's a sweet wine. Um, nowhere near as sweet as uh, the European styles that we're used to. Not like a Sauternes, Montbiziac. They don't get noble rot or botrytis in there because it's so dry. Um, there's no humidity to yeah. get that that uh, fung fungal disease in there. Um, so they just do a late harvest, leave the grapes on there, they shrivel up, get a concentration of sugar, and end up with more sugar in the wine after they're fermented. And, and Septima means seventh, doesn't it? Uh, sorry, Septima, Se yeah, Septima is uh, the, well, it's established in 1999, but it's based around seven days of creation. So yeah. Septima dia, seventh day, Septima noche, seventh night. Um, so it's a much fresher style. Of, of sweet wine, very floral, aromatic. And what's, uh, the, what's the alcohol on this one? The alcohol's 15%. 15% again. Yeah. Let's see if we get it on this one. And 50 grams of sugar per litre. It's got, it's, got, it's got that kind of um, slightly, and some sweet spice there again. Yeah, honeysuckle. Honeysuckle. I mean, it, yeah, it is six months in French oak as well. It's so like ginger or something there. there as well. Ginger, actually, yeah, yeah I picked up it. This is um, a great one to, if you're having like citrus light, especially summer desserts. It might even go well with panna cotta. Mm. We tried a lot today. Like a lemon verbena panna cotta. Oh. Mm. And here's some we might know. That's me all excited. That's that is lovely. And of course, as uh, as Jake mentioned, 
Argentina is so well known for Malbec, so well known for Torontes as well, or more, becoming more well known. But let's give some focus to the other grapes because well, it's they're, such they're, a big wine producing country, isn't it? And also they're so um, forward thinking, they're great experimenta experimentators, you know, they like, they've always got little vats all over the place doing weird and wonderful things that yeah. they're wanting you to know about. So yeah, a little bit like your style at the minute as well, you exactly, change your style. Yeah. I like experimenting, yeah. <laughs> Well, I think that's uh, kind of, that's the note to finish on, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Jake. Fantastic show. Uh, just a, just a, a drop in the ocean Absolutely, in terms yeah. of Gordon New selection, but uh, a wonderful drop, be it. Thank you very much. Pleasure, Jimmy. And this is the wine guy. <laughs>